Step 2. Mode dispersion. Mode dispersion is our first source of uh, losses in the fiber that we're going to consider. So let's consider the propagation of different modes in a multimode fiber. As we said, a multimode fiber uh, can contain many modes, all traveling with different paths. For example, you can have the axial path, which travels directly um, down the fiber, or you can have other modes which are being totally reflect, internally reflected within the fiber like that. And as you can see, the different modes, they propagate at different speeds because they have to traverse different lengths. So it's very important to uh, compute what is the time difference uh, introduced uh, by, tr uh, by the different modes traveling at different speeds down the fiber. And this, as you can expect, depends on the launch angle. So depending on the angle with which it is coupled to the fiber, the path that it takes will be different, and therefore the time that it takes to traverse the fiber will be also different. So the fastest mode, as you can clearly see, travels directly down the fiber. This is known as the axial mode, because it travels down the axis of the fiber. And the slowest mode, is that one that is incident on the cladding just at the critical angle, meaning it just gets internally reflected. So let's compute the time delay between the fastest mode and the slowest mode. Why that is important is that your initial digitized signal may look something like this. It's very sharp and it's very easy to read out when you have a zero and when you have a one. But as the different modes propagate down the fiber, the whole package will spread and disperse. It will look something like this. What this means is that uh, the readability of the output signal worsens, meaning it's, very, it's more easy to make a mistake when you're actually trying to decode your signal after it propagates through the fiber. So here we are, and let's start calculating the time delay between the fastest mode and the slowest mode. We're going to consider some length capital L that the fastest axial mode traverses, and the time that it takes uh, uh, for this mode to traverse this distance, we will call T min. So again, it's the time for the axial rate to travel length L of the fiber. And we can very easily compute it. That this, uh, the T min is just the distance traversed over the speed of light uh, in the fiber. And we have seen that the speed of the light in the fiber is determined from the refractive index of the material that um, the fiber is made out of. So Vf is equal to C over Nf. We can substitute that into our expression for T min, and we obtain the following. T min is equal to length, uh, uh, capital L, times the refractive index of the fiber, all divided by the speed of light in vacuum C. Now let's consider uh, the time that it takes for some non-axial mode to traverse the sa sum distance, capital L. Here, the distance that uh, 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 it travels is not actually capital L, but it's some other, small l. It's this distance that it travels here, plus this distance that it travels there. So we can break it into two paths. Small l is equal to small l1 plus small l2. Let's start by computing the small l1. And this division into l, small l1 and small l2 also uh, divides our capital L into capital L1 plus capital L2. So the angle over here we're going to denote as theta r for angle of refraction. And we know from Snell's law, uh, so from basic trigonometry, that this length, small l1, is equal to this capital L1 divided by the cosine of the refraction angle theta r. That gives us l1. Now, how do we compute l2? Well, we can use a nice, neat little trick, and we can actually uh, reflect this distance, this arrow here, which describes our distance L2 over there, 
So we are extending the distance like this. And then L2 is given just this, capital L2 divided by cosine of the refraction angle theta r. So we can just sum them together and we see that the uh, length, the path length that the uh, light ray traverses, L, is just the sum of these two terms, small l1 plus small l2. So it's given just as capital L over cosine of theta r. So we see that the uh, path length of the light ray only depends on the initial angle described by theta r and the axial length, capital L, over here. So from that we can also compute the time that it takes to traverse this uh, length small l. And again, it's given by small l divided by the speed of light in the, in the fiber, which, substituting all for l and for vf, we obtain this following expression. So it's the axial length capital L times the refractive index of our fiber, all divided by the speed of light in vacuum times the cosine of the refraction angle theta r. So let's get back to computing T max. T max is the time to travel a critical non-axial path. As we said, that such a path where we are just being reflected internally, meaning that the angle of incidence on the cladding is theta c, our critical angle. And we have seen in previous lessons that sine of theta c is related to the cosine of the refraction angle over here. So T max can then be computed as L times the refractive index of the fiber squared over the speed of light in vacuum times the refractive index of the cladding. Now it's very easy to just put the expressions for T max and T min together and we obtain the time delay as follows. And it's given by this expression over here. Now we are going to plug in some numbers and see why this time delay is actually important. So let's consider a particular example where the refractive index of the fiber is given by 1.5 and uh, the refractive index of the cladding is a little bit less and we will consider the value of 1.489. We can plug these numbers uh, into our previous expression for the time delay and obtain that the time delay per one kilometer is given uh, as follows. It's 37 nanoseconds per kilometer. So this doesn't seem like a very long time delay, but we will see what effects it has. So the speed of light in this fiber is given by the refractive index of this fiber. So it's Vf is equal to C, the speed of light in vacuum, divided by the refractive index, which is just 2 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That means that our pulse spreads over a distance as it travels through the fiber, because as we said, the modes are becoming dispersed. And we can quantify it and obtain the following value. It's 7.4 nanometers per kilometer. So every kilometer that our signal travels, it becomes more and more spread by this distance, 7.4 nanometers. As we said, this reduces the readability of the output signal. Because our packages are becoming more spread, we are losing the sharpness of our signal and it's more difficult to decode our signal. So in order to be able to read our output signal, we may demand that the uh, pulses, which are coming out of our fiber, are separated by twice the value of, by which, uh, of the spreading. So this means that in order for the uh, for the attenuated signal, for the dispersed signal that's coming out of the fiber uh, to be separate, the pulses to be separated by 14.8 nanometers, we require that the input pulses are also separated by at least 14.8 nanometers. This on, uh, uh, inadvertently places a limit on how fast we can uh, transmit uh, information because the pulses have to be separated by a certain uh, amount. So we cannot place them more closely together and we cannot 
um, send the information at a, at a higher frequency. So dispersion has a direct consequence on the frequency of the input signal, meaning that it also limits our bandwidth.